What's going on, YouTube? Chris from Jersey Digs here, and welcome to another informative episode on metal detecting, where I will be going over the frequency settings on the Nocta Legend. I've been using the Legend for about a month and a half now, and after six weeks or so of reading the manual from front to back and watching enough YouTube videos to kill a horse, I felt as though I had enough knowledge on it to kind of go over my thoughts and opinions on how to use frequency and leverage it to your advantage in certain scenarios. So if you're new to metal detecting, the Nocta legend, or just want to learn more about frequency in general, you're in the right place. So I hope you enjoy the watch, and please consider subscribing if you do. So let's get right into it. In this part of the video, I'm only going to be talking about park mode up here at the top, as it has the most frequencies in it. So Nocta went ahead and offered not two, not five, but ten different frequency modes for you to choose from. And each search mode has been optimized with frequencies to offer the best performance. So let's start going through them. I'll be primarily reviewing frequency here in park mode um, because it offers showing you majority of them with me out without me having to change the mode. So the first thing I want to note about frequency before I really even get into them is that when you change frequency in one mode, so say I change this to M2 or M3 in park mode and I switch it over to field mode, that will not change field mode or any of the other modes. So just something to note with frequency, you do have to change it dependent upon the mode that you're in. But let's get back to park mode here and start talking about the different frequencies. So to change frequencies, you can't see it on my screen, but there is a frequency button down here at the bottom left of your control box here on your detector, which will start um, changing you through the frequencies as you click it. And you have a whole bunch to choose from here, but let's start with M1. So M1 is just one of three different multi-frequency offerings that the legend has. And according to the manual and from what I gathered online and on Reddit and YouTube, Multi-1 is designed for higher conductive targets like silver coins. So if you're looking to get silver coins in your bag, at your home, to your collection, M1 seems to be the best option for you. Next, I'll go ahead and switch it over here to M2. And that's multi-frequency too. And essentially, from what I gather, this one is made for lower conductive targets like gold and brass. And last but not least for your multi-options in park mode is multi-3. So multi-3, they say, is preferred for wet, humid, and conductive soils. On top of that, they say to use multi-3 in trashy sites because this will provide better target ID and separation. So say you have like a silver coin and a nail in close proximity to one another and it gets under your coil. Essentially what I gather is multi-3 will provide you with a better target ID in the center of your screen here um, when you get over it. So in a nutshell, you have three different multi-frequencies to choose from. And in summary, they should provide better target identification at depth, better stability, better target separation, and as well as a good balance for all different target types. Next, let's start talking about our single frequency. So to get into single frequency, again, it's just you sifting through all the frequencies, which brings you to the first one after multi-frequency three, which is four kilohertz. 4 kilohertz is best if you're looking for higher conductive targets only. Uh, they say it will provide more depth for larger silver coins, but it can be more noisy with certain soil conditions. In the next part here, I'm going to talk about two frequencies at the same time, which are the next two. 10, frequen 10 kilohertz, 10 frequencies, 10 kilohertz, and 15 kilohertz. Consider these two frequencies a good like middle of the road frequency for detecting. They can be ideal for coins, jewelry, small silver, you know, a good middle of the road frequency. And again, I'm going to group the next two frequencies together because they more or less serve the same purpose. So you have 20 and 40 kilohertz there, as you see, I'll go through it once more, 20, 40. And both of these are best designed for low conductive targets. So think of things like small gold jewelry, small gold nuggets, and of course, foil. So that's frequencies, and I'll show you them through the mode. So as you switch to field mode, they will be the same frequency offerings, M1, M2, M3. You, you folks get the point here. Um, ideally, I, I find myself sitting in M2 or M3 a good amount um, in field mode. It all depends on the hunt, really. And as you heard earlier, changing your frequency, you know, can help you better identify or find, you know, your desired targets. 
When we switch over here to beach mode, beach mode has two different multi-frequency offerings and that's it. You have MW, which stands for multi-wet, and MD, which stands for multi-dry. When I am at the beach, I do find myself just keeping this in multi-wet for majority of the time, but if I am primarily hunting dry sand, I would likely switch it to multi-dry. I'm not sure if there's any discernible difference as of yet in using the detector, but that's just my two cents. And last but not least, we have gold field mode. So gold field mode is a little different in the fact that it only offers multi-frequency 20 kilohertz and 40 kilohertz. And again, you would want those higher single frequencies for identifying, you know, those lower conductive targets as in the small gold that Goldfield is trying to appeal to. So one quick thing about single frequency is they say single frequency may be less noisy than multi-frequency in areas with high EMI. And what that stands for is electromagnetic interference. Basically, that's unwanted noise in an electrical path caused by an outside source. And basically it can cause your metal detector or other electronics in general to operate poorly. So if you do run into an area like that where you're just getting an immense amount of chatter or there's numbers appearing on your VDI but there's nothing under your detector, consider toying around with the frequencies and see if you can find yourself one that offers more stability. And outside of that, that's frequencies in a nutshell. Um, my two cents at the end here, I would highly recommend to change your frequency dependent upon your target type. Don't just only be limiting yourself to one frequency because you could be missing up on, you know, valuables and precious items or relics in the ground. Um, one thing I've been doing lately is going over sites that I've previously hammered in single frequency on my simplex, which operates at 12 kilohertz and going through it um, in all different frequency modes. And I've actually been pulling more targets in, in the areas that I've beaten on over the course of a year. So always recommended, um, just change that. And, and outside of that, folks, uh, that's frequencies. I hope you enjoyed the watch and see you on the next take.